right. So when you see your patient, your tilapia, what do you Yes, do? so first you can you have to just examine and then uh -huh. identify exactly what might be wrong. My job is to um I see the patient, um, identify the lesion Who and then tell patient? the fish in this case, yeah. <laughs> When the word agriculture is mentioned, it is usually considered to be a professional vocation for the aged people. But in recent times, we are encouraging young people to take interest in venturing into the area of farming or aquaculture. This whole month is dedicated to promoting and putting the spotlight on different African countries that are here in Ghana, including our very own Ghanaians, who are on floor cell farms enhancing the practical aspect of what they've learned so far in the university. Today, I find myself among two young people, one man on my right and a young woman on my left. I'm going to find out about their names, what they study in the university, and what they are doing here. What role are they playing to scale up or develop the aquaculture sector? My name is Enyona, and this is the Ghanaian farmer. Please subscribe, share the link, and let hear from you wherever it is you're watching us. So I'll start with a man right here. Hello, sir. Hi. What's your name? My name is David George Peniel. David George Peniel. Yes. Are you a Ghanaian? Yeah, I'm a Ghanaian. Are you a farmer or you're a student? <laughs> I'm a student for the time being, but my profession is um, a veterinarian. Veterinary? Yes. Ah, uh, why veterinary is mentioned in agriculture? Me, I know it's goat and chicken. What is veterinary doing in aquaculture? Um, well, um, first of all, fish fish are considered as animals, so okay. they fall within my scope all right. and my patient's range. Okay. And yeah. Okay. All right. So let me talk to the beautiful woman here and find out about her name and who she is. What's your name, please? My name is Priscilla Nana Sabia Simpi. Hey. <laughs> Nana Sabia. Priscilla Nana Sabia Simpi. It's about no, no. four or five names. And uh, are you also a student or you've graduated from school? Okay, I've graduated. Um, I graduated from the University of Ghana Animal Biology mm -hmm. and Conservation Science Department. In which year? 2019. Okay, so it's been three years already. Yes, four. Four years. Yeah, almost okay. four, yeah. Right after school, have you done your national service? Yes, I have. In a farm? No, in my department. Okay. As a T national service personnel there. So from what you mentioned, what typical role do you play in this space? Okay, so I'm an intern here. Okay. So learning all about aquaculture, having your own fish farm and all, because that's what I want to do, have my own fish farm. So I searched for an opportunity and I found this and then by God's grace, I'm here to learn. You are not interested in doing other things. You want to be a farmer? Yes, I want to be a farmer. <laughs> for real? Yes. Okay. So, doctor, you mentioned aquaculture veterinary doctor. Yeah. So typically, when I hear that word, what are your duties on a farm? Okay, so um, the first um, idea behind disease control mm. is prevention. Okay. So as a as a veterinarian on a on a on a fish farm, mm. my duty is to prevent disease infection okay. primarily, right. and that's the most cost effective way of reducing and the cost effective way of running a farm, basically. Okay. So. The, my other duty is also, in case there's an outbreak, my duty is also to diagnose. Mm. So that includes disease sampling, doing postmortems, even identifying the disease on its own, because okay. some farmers may not know. Okay. So my job is to um, I see the patient, um, identify the lesion, Who and then tell the fish, in this case, <laughs> yeah. Fish, tilapia is patient, you know. All right, so when you see your patient, your tilapia, what do you Yes, do? so first you can, you have to just examine and then... Uh -huh identify exactly what might be wrong you might not see it then so you need to take samples okay. take it to labs run it and then diagnose okay. then after that you would advise the farmer okay. or you yourself would actually participate in helping manage the disease on the farm okay. by advising so sometimes maybe you need to change something in the diet mm -hmm. include something in the diet mm -hmm. um clear out the farm on its own disinfect we do a whole lot of things in okay. aquaculture yes okay so from what you have said, what are some of these basic diseases that you even studied in the classroom before coming here? And since you have been here, have you seen any? Not not so far, but um, one that comes off the top of my head is the fin rot. Okay. Yeah, it's, it, it usually appears that the fin is being eroded. Okay. 
and you can see it when you look at it so it's a gross lesion that's what we call wow. easily identifiable or visually accessible and lesions okay. so that's one one i've just seen today working in the pond oh here. you've seen one yes okay so we'll get closer to the pond so that dog will take a fish and see how some of the things you have to look out for when you are a fish farmer maybe you don't have a doctor yet but he will show you some basic things you have to look at when you have your fish right in your pond so atabia what would be that motivation you have graduated from school you've done your national studies in, in your department at the university right why won't you stay there and look for work? Why would you want to come to the farm? Today you are lucky the weather is good. Like you will see something. That's not... Tell me what's this motivation? Well, it's been from childhood and my twin sister and I. Okay. I think oh, because, you're a twin? Yes. Okay. Because my grandma was a farmer. Right. So we've seen all of it and then we always wanted to enter into fish farm, into farming actually. But we've been discouraged because, I mean, you're very good. Why don't you go into medicine? Why don't yeah. you go into this and all of that? But I think it's time. Is time because the more you wait the more other things keep happening and then you see people doing what you want to do and you're like no you can't waste more time you have to go after your dream so how many days have you been on the farm so far okay so this is um that's four days that's almost two weeks yes almost two okay weeks. what are some of the the basic things that you were introduced to okay so how to prepare my own feed mm -hmm. and then i was made and um, i was given ponds to take care of mm -hmm. And then, yes, how to um, change my own water mm -hmm. in my pond mm -hmm. and yeah. I'm counting of eggs okay. to check the average body weight and all of that. Right. Yes. Okay. So, how common is or how available is those who are in your, your field, your, I mean, aquaculture doctors? How are you guys many? No, not really. Um, I know six people off the top of my head well i was told there are six people but and i've met the a couple yes that are exclusively that they work in the fisheries department okay. in the government but yeah my interest is to go into the private institution work as a private um veterinary in the aquaculture space yes. right how important is you to mm. my farm success without you why i know if you do my farm or <laughs> well or you can do it without me but as of I don't think you make you'll be profitable. Okay. Yes, because disease is inevitable, and my job is to make sure that you maximize the the survival of your fish. Mm. Yes, because fish we don't in fish farming we don't consider one single fish. It's a it's a it's a numbers game. Yeah. So we make sure that my job is to make sure that you a lot of fish survive from fry to adulthood. Okay. Yeah, to ready to harvest age. Yes. But how many years do you have to graduate from school? How many um, years so, will it take you? So ideally, uh -huh. um, you do six years in veterinary school in Ghana, and then you have to do some postgraduate. So I'm here also to learn, also to experience, to have some hands-on uh -huh. experience before I get. Six years they study fish disease. Not fish per se, but the whole six years is for <laughs> every animal. Uh, but you, to, spe oh, okay. to specialize, right. you need to do some years in universities not in Ghana. Okay. Yeah, you can go to other universities. Primarily, I think in the US, okay. Europe, and then East Southeast Asia. Right. Those are the best places to get information on aquatic medicine basically okay. yes okay all right so asabia so far from what people have said farming doesn't pay it's so stressful people don't respect farmers are all the things no typical words that would deter you from pursuing this dream no because um from getting to meet some of the farmers and all of that you realize that it's not true okay. if you are really putting in measures and i mean we've been to school so we are not just going to be like the olden days farmers who didn't have the book knowledge and all of that we have it and we have the practical so we merge it make the most out of it make more profit have you been to any other farm before this uh fish farm yes. no okay no all right but from the look of things, we have less number when it comes to women participation mm -hmm. in farming. Mm -hmm. What do you think has to be done to attract more women to go into this space? I think it has to start from grooming and growing of your children. Okay. So that you don't say maybe because you are very uh, intelligent, you should go into this profession and all. We should let them know that it also pays. Mm -hmm. And then if they want to do it, they should be encouraged to do it. And then we should let them know that um, there are more profits in this game. It's not like it's just um it's just farming where you just go to the farm you carry your things and it's not luxurious and all of that like no job is really luxurious even the doctors in the hospital it's not so luxurious yeah. it's just when you come out that i'm a doctor it's yeah. the same for farmers too okay. so we should find a way to encourage them that if they want to do it they should do it it's not just with the parents being that 
my daughter is very good. She can't be a farmer. Should, they should be educated on the fact that farming is not just what we used to think it is. There's more to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Doc, how affordable is your 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 kind? Mm -hmm. If a fish farmer, after watching your interview today, realizes that I've been having challenges with my fish, uh, grasping for air. The oxygen, the water, and all those things. How oh, for that work? Can I pay? You are expert, too. Um, so it's. I don't think it's necessarily. We don't have. A, I don't think there's a flat rate, okay. and we also consider the the size and scale of the, the farm. The size and scale yeah, of the farm. We okay. can't treat all farms equally. equally. It has to be equitable. Mm. So you go to a big farm, you know how much money um they put into it. So yeah. you know how much the level of advice you can give, yeah. and the type of recommendations you make would suit their pockets. I can't right. also go to a one pond farm and mm -hmm. ask them to do what larger farms are doing. Yeah. So it's all it's all varies mm. and the approach varies across mm. all different farms, mm. yes. But what, what do you make of the uh, aquaculture space? Do you think we are making progress? What do we need to do to grow? Okay, so progress yes, because when I was growing up I also didn't hear so much about Aquaculture. I just knew the, this whole tilapia. They brought tilapia <laughs> from the water. And then you get them on your bank on your fufu. And then I said, but um, I think it's growing. I've heard of some foreign companies coming in, but I would be I would take pride in making sure that most Ghanaians own the resource, the fish in Ghana, run the farms in Ghana, and also profit in Ghana because they will take their expertise and their profits out elsewhere. But you also need to invest in Ghana right. and protein. And I, I was also told that we, we are not even meeting. A protein requirement exactly. as a nation so mm. yes exact um if we get more Ghanaians mm -hmm. going into the mm -hmm. farming mm -hmm. it will help us meet our quota and we don't necessarily have to go and exchange reserve currency for fish mm -hmm. we can focus the reserve currency on the things we can't produce here okay. yes Asabia, what's the way forward for you after flow how many months are you staying here for um four months four months yes after four months what's the way forward what where next will i meet you hopefully on my farm hey. <laughs> <laughs> that's it on your farm right yeah. okay so i know that when it comes to the aquaculture space we are not just doing uh tilapia but also catfish. Fish. is that what you intend to do or you want to zoom and do just one thing which is tilapia? okay so is the two actually okay. but you see in ghana as a now tilapia sell, sells more than catfish yeah. so tilapia more mm -hmm. than catfish when it's, it becomes very popular mm -hmm. we go into that too okay yes. all right so lastly what would be that word you want to share, especially to your sponsors, those who are paying for this training? Um, I don't know if Ghanaian government has any plans of doing something like this. But you know, had it not been for wish, what would you have done? Where, how would you have picked up this practical skills that you're doing to at least set up your own farm? What would be your word to your sponsors? Okay, so I'm very grateful to them for this opportunity because I was really looking forward to getting an opportunity like this. Went online, search, search, DM some people, didn't get any response and all till I saw this and then it was really real. My parents didn't even believe that it was real. So my mother had to come here with me because right. like who would do this? Yes. yes. So it's really a great opportunity and we thank them that we and um, people like us are also participating in it where we can also get knowledge and then train other people too. Yeah, so we are very grateful. Okay, so Doc, a farmer who is yet to start or is already working but hasn't thought about inviting experts like you mm -hmm. to come to their farm and, and assist them, what would be your professional advice to them? Oh, well, we are just a phone call away. Mm. And call us when you need us. Mm. And also seek um, listen, seek and listen to our counsel because we know what you're talking about. So okay. yeah. And we can help you to maximize your profit, maximize your earnings and also yes, be able to expand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what we, we provide to farmers everywhere. And of course to young people who are being attracted to the farming or the world agriculture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But talk that farming is all about going to burn and dig <laughs> and plant. Tell me some of the opportunities that we can actually study and become experts and be charging money like you. What do you have to tell those yeah, especially from the SHS level, mm. who don't know the various opportunities that are in this space? Yes. Okay. Well, um, our advice that they should read wide, okay. expand their horizons. Mm. There are opportunities where you least expect, mm. and they should um, put aside any inhibitions, mm. thinking and don't think and should not think that any profession is better than the other. There's mm. there's nothing there's nothing um, prestigious about a fact check in your account. So that's all you need at the end of the day. And also follow your passion. Mm. I mean. 
if this is not for you, it's not for you. But yeah. if it is for you, yeah. you would enjoy it and it will become work. Exactly. Yes. That's it. So you need to, first of all, know that this is what I want to do. You do it effortlessly without any struggle or challenge. Asabia graduated. She did her service in the University of Ghana. She would have stayed there wear her high heels and dress and, and have fun. But she still says, no, I want to be a farmer. So this is where she finds herself. She's going to spend four months here, living in her comfortable bed and staying on the field and being taken through how to prepare your feed and care for them. She even has a pond. So it means that every day she'll have to go to a pond and care for it. That's a sad day. If you're a young woman out there, you have no excuse to say, I'm unemployed. There's nothing like unemployment now in Ghana. You will be unemployed if you want to be. But if you want to have money in your account and live a comfortable life within your means, there is something you can do. And that's what Flow Cell, in collaboration with Wish, are doing to support young people who want to have a career in the space of aquaculture. My name is Anjana. Thank you so much for hanging out with me this week. I'll see you some other time. But for now, please subscribe and share my link. Thank you so much, sir. Welcome. Thank you. Thank You're you very welcome. much. Yeah.